So this is our review of exam one, chapters one, two, and three. I'm going to be looking at 3.2, measures of variation. And as noted, variation is most important. We have three basic measures of variation. We have standard deviation, which is very, very much like the average distance a value falls from the mean. So your standard deviation That's the average distance from the mean. We have the range, which is the difference between the high and the low, or the maximum and min. And we have the variance. And that is the square of the standard deviation. Those are the three major uh, measures of variation that we take a look at in this section. <clears throat> and I'm going to run through a couple of detail, bits of detail here about um, all of these. <clears throat> First off, standard deviation. There is a method using a table and a long hand process. That's not how we like to do our standard deviation. We want to make sure we use our calculator to do that. <clears throat> Same for the range and variance. I cannot stress this enough because your uh, Oh, calculator make me happy there. <clears throat> because if you take a close look at your text, you might end up with the idea that you're supposed to do these calculations longhand with the table. That's not the case. We really do want to use our calculator to do that. <clears throat> so those are our three major me uh, measures of variation. Let me go ahead and put together an example, and we'll take a look at the uh, measures of variation. Before I do that, I want to set out the rounding rules. <clears throat> we like to round our measures of variation to one more decimal place than the data. All right, so <clears throat> let me go ahead and put some data up here and then we'll run through an example or two. I'm going to start with a fresh sheet. And we have a random sample. Let's see, we're going to look at speeds in miles per hour. Maybe we're on an overpass. And let's see, 66.1, 63.9, 57.4, another 57.4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 69.9, 73.7, 8, 89.6, oh my God, that guy's got to slow down, 60.0, and they're going way too slow for the fast lane. And then we'll finish up with hmm, 61 point, oh, I don't know, my favorite number three, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to find those measures of variation. <clears throat> the only one your calculator finds directly immediately is the standard deviation. It gives you everything you need to know to find the variance and the range, but they are uh, separate. So let me jump over here to Mr. Calculator. And I'm going to get him up and running.
Let me share my screen. All right, so stat, edit. Oh, I've got data in there. It's not the data I want. I will scroll up to the L1. I'll hit clear and then enter and it goes away. So 66.1. Nine point seven, eighty nine point six, sixty, sixty point zero, and sixty one point three. So that data is in there. I'm going to run through the keystrokes. <clears throat> Depending on how your calculator is set up, if you have one of the old fashioned kind, you have no stat wizards at all. And when you run your calculation, <clears throat> your calculation looks like this. So one variable stats, the first one up there. I pointed at list one and I hit enter. So there we have all my summary statistics. I have the mean, I have the standard deviation, I have min, Q1, median, Q3, and max. An important point is to note exactly what it is we are working with. We have a random sample. So if I am after the standard deviation, I wanna take the 10.037 number and not the 9.52 number. Sample standard deviation with S. This is sigma here, sigma with uh, <clears throat> your population standard deviation. So that's my sample standard deviation. <clears throat> and uh, everything I, else I need for the range is down here. I need my min and I need my max. <clears throat> the one thing that is not on this screen directly or even indirectly is the variance. Let me know what the standard deviation is first, and then we'll talk about finding the variance. <clears throat> so, I've noted the standard deviation. I am going to go ahead now and find the variance. And then I'm gonna come back to this screen and find the range. And the way your calculator works is this. If you make a calculation, your calculator remembers everything it has done for that calculation. So I asked my calculator to do the one variable stats. So right now it has in its memory all the important numbers that you see on this screen here. They're already in the memory. If I do another one variable stats, those values will replace these values. So I need my variance. Here's the thing. My variance is the requirement that I square my standard deviation. And the problem is if I use the rounded off version of my standard deviation, the values will not be the same. So what I need to do is I need to take the S and all the decimal places I see there and square them. Do I need to write down all those decimal places so I remember them? I mean, they're just crazy long. <clears throat> and the answer is no. This is how we handle variance. <clears throat> Over here, we have a key called VARS. That's for variables, nothing to do with variance directly. If I click on the VARS key, I get a list of variables that my calculator has recently messed with. <clears throat> we are working with statistics, so I will select the statistics variable. They're all here. S 
is my standard deviation. If I select S, this is what I see. Now look, that ain't that impressive, but if you hit enter, you realize all the decimal places are there. So the way we handle variance is thusly. I select VARs, select statistics, select the sample standard deviation. And then on my main screen, I select the X squared key and I get the 100.746 or 100.75. I got a little bit more to say about that. <clears throat> But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and find the range. I can also use these keys to find the range. I find my stats, I find the max, I subtract, the min, and I get 32.2. <clears throat> the other thing I can do is just note those numbers and subtract them directly. So we have a range of 32.20 miles per hour. So let me stop sharing my screen and come back to my tablet. <clears throat> so we have a random sample. There's my data set. We have speeds and miles per hour. You'll notice that the data contains one decimal place for each data entry. Therefore, my sample statistics needs to contain two. So you'll note that I've got two decimal places for all of these numbers. especially the range, note the range. That was 32.2, but I threw that extra zero in just so everyone would have the same, the same uh, level of accuracy. It's really important that your summary statistics have one more decimal place at least of accuracy over the data. Otherwise it's just like data, can't tell diddly squat. So the first part of 3.2 <clears throat> deals with finding, and I'll come back to this date detail in a moment, I think, finding um, these measures of variation. And there are a couple of other topics in this section that are quite important. what we term significant scores. And there's a couple of different ways they get referred to, but significant scores is kind of how our, our author likes to refer to them. Significant scores are far from the mean. Far from the mean. How far is far though? That's the real question. So, <clears throat> A score is significantly high or low if it is at least two standard deviations either above or below the mean. <clears throat> so, it's very, it's a, it's a somewhat arbitrary uh, line in the sand that's two standard deviations and it does change. But for much of what we do this semester, we like to use the uh, two standard deviation.
uh, <clears throat> the two standard deviation limit. So I can take my mean and I can add and subtract two standard deviations uh, from that mean uh, to find the scores or the values that, that identify significantly high or low scores. So let me uh, bring back another piece of paper or bring in another piece of paper here. And, and we will note <clears throat> that X bar was equal to, let me take a look at Mr. Calculator here. Sixty-five point seven two standard deviation ten point zero four. So if I take that sixty-five point seven two plus or minus two times ten point zero four, that's going to give me some values on my number line. We're gonna go up two standard deviations. We're gonna go down two standard deviations. That's the 10.04 right there. <clears throat> so on my calculator, in fact, let me go ahead and demonstrate that. Sixty five point seven two plus two times ten point zero four. And if I've got to make the same calculation again, second enter gives me back that same calculation. And I can scroll back over and change my plus to a minus. And 65.64, or excuse me, 45.64. So when I work those two expressions, I get 45.64 on the low end and 85.80 on the high end. So <clears throat> speeds higher than that, or at least that high are way high. <clears throat> speeds that are at least that low are way low. <clears throat> significantly high, significantly low. So <clears throat> this is really how we like to work this particular type of uh, detail. So as I say, we can use significant scores to identify values that are far from the mean, the mean plus or minus two standard deviations. We almost always have samples, but occasionally we do work with populations. I'm thinking of questions like IQ questions, where we know the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 15. One other big topic from chapter three, 3.2 was the empirical rule. So we need a normal distribution and we need the mean and the standard deviation. I've run through a bunch of examples in this uh, with this already, so I'll summarize it pretty quickly. <laughs> because I've got to draw my normal distributions, uh, I'll put one, I'll put two, I'll put three, one, two, three, mu, mu. And then we'll go out one standard deviation. And then we have in this area, about 68% of data values. This time we go out two standard deviations and we have about 
95% of data values So one, one, two, two, three, three. <clears throat> so <clears throat> go out three standard deviations, we get about 99.7% of data values. <clears throat> and that really is the last big topic out of this particular uh, section. I will note a couple of things, or one thing in particular, we have a competing theory or a, well, it's not a competing theory. It is a supplementary theory. Um, there is no There is no Chebyshev's theorem on this exam. Um, it is covered in your text. I do not ex assign homework problems. And if one snuck in there, I apologize. <clears throat> but there are no Chebyshev problems on any of our quizzes or our exams. You do not need to review that material. All right, <clears throat> so that pretty much brings me to the end of my review for uh, 3.2 measures of variation. I'm going to go ahead and stop my recording, and then I'm going to start it again, and I'll uh, talk about section 3.3.